Um, okay, so I want to do one more example using the product rule so that you can see it again. Um, and also to help solidify this idea of the tangent line, right? So we talked about the tangent line um, earlier we, when we did secant lines and tangent lines. I want to do it um, again to make sure you're making that connection that this derivative is connected with this instantaneous rate of change. So uh, what I want to do is for this function h of x, oh, I don't need a comma, I need an equal sign. For h of x equals x minus 1 times x squared, uh, let's make this a 3x minus 1, x squared minus 8x plus 7. Use the product rule. To find the equation of the tangent line, at x is equal to, let's say, 2. Okay? Okay, so I want to go ahead and practice, and maybe in real life you would just multiply these out right and then take the derivative that seems um, maybe a little bit easier but let's go ahead and use the product rule so I'm going to identify these pieces this is going to be my piece f 3x minus 1 and g over here so f of x equals 3x minus 1 f prime of x is just 3 g of x is x squared minus 8x plus 7 and g prime equals 2x minus 8. Okay, and then I use the product rule which says that h prime should be f g prime plus g f prime. Okay, so let's see, I'll put in f 3x minus 1 and g prime plus g x squared minus 8x plus 7 times 3. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this um, to make sure that um, get it in simplified form. So I'll FOIL this out, 6x squared, um, and my outer terms are minus 24x. I'll just do those separately, minus 2x and plus 8 plus 3x squared minus 24x plus 21 and I get 9x squared uh, and I get a negative 24, a negative 2 and another negative 24 I think. Um, so that gives me I think negative 50x. Is that what you guys get? And I get an 8 and a 21 is plus 29. Okay. So that's the derivative of this function, okay, h prime. Now, this derivative at a point is the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of this tangent line is h prime, and we're looking at the point 2, right? So I'm going to plug that into the derivative to find the slope. Let me get my calculator. 9 times 4 minus 100 plus 29. And I get negative 35 to be the slope of this tangent line. And then I need a point on the line, right, in order to write this equation. So let me go ahead and get a point, or at least the beginning of a point. This comes from the x value is 2. To find the y value, I plug into not h prime, but into h of x. So the y value should be this h of 2. So my original function h is this here. Let's see, it was 3x minus 1 and x squared minus 8x plus 7. And so I'll plug in the 2. 3 times 2 minus 1, 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 7. 
So let's see, 3 squared, my, uh, 3 times 2 minus 1 should give me a 5. And 4 minus 16 plus 7, negative 5. So this is negative 25. So my point here, maybe I'll just scroll down a little bit so that we can see, and I want to keep track of this information. I have the slope of the tangent line that we just found is negative 35, and my point is 2, negative 25, right? Okay. So I want to go ahead then and use this information, the equation of the line, isn't changing. If this is point slope form. y minus y2 equals m times x minus x2. So I get y minus negative 25, negative 35 times x minus 2. y plus 25 is equal to negative 35 x plus 70. And y is equal to negative 35x plus 70 minus 25, 45. There's the tangent line right there to this original graph. This is tangent to h of x, which was this, 3x minus 1, and x squared minus 8x plus 7 at x is equal to 2. So it's only the tangent line at that point. If we wanted to graph it, it would pass through that point on the graph, okay? And this graph tends to approximate how the function is changing right there. So this value here, this slope value, tells me that the output tends to be changing by minus 35 units for every one change in x, right? We still have this interpretation of slope where it's this change in y over the change in x. So when I get a negative 35, it's like a negative 35 over 1. If I were to change the input by one value, by one unit, then the entire output is going to go down by 35 units approximately at that point, okay? So all of these things work together or have these interpretations together. I don't want you to forget about that as we go through the mechanics of learning how to compute derivatives. That stuff is all still there behind the scenes and is one of the reasons um, that derivatives are so powerful in doing analysis of functions. Okay, so just let me know if you have any questions about any of this.